I don't think you could fit an elephant in the car. Hello, people on the internet watching car reviews. Welcome to this. The all new 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport. Today, I'm gonna get this thing up in the air. We're gonna nerd out on the tech specs, see how this all new 11th gen Accord is constructed, and then go give it some beans. It feels so good to review a normal car again instead of an SUV or a crossover. It looks like a sun chip made out of seat sheet metal. Weird. And the muffler looks like a sea turtle with a little downturned head. Now back in the olden days of the early 2000s, families used to drive these things, front wheel drive sedans. As you'll notice, this rear subframe, which is constructed out of steel, does not house a rear differential, the drive shaft, or an electric motor. It's just front wheel drive car. The multi-link rear suspension, most of which is comprised out of steel, other than the knuckle, that's cast aluminum. Uh, the links are stamped steel though. That's a kind of neat brace it has. Paired with a simple traditional fixed rate damper, looks like it might be Honda branded. As far as rear auntie sway bar here, she measures in at 16 millimeter in diameter and it is solid back here. The exhaust piping under the rear subframe gets squishy, didn't it? This new Accord's got a fairly slick flat floor underneath it. It's a little bit hairier in the center down here than I was expecting. It's not what he said. And uh, as far as this being the sport hybrid, it weighs a little bit more than the non-hybrid models at 3,477 pounds and it has a 61 to 39 front to rear weight distribution. Seriously though, that is some bushy underbody paneling. It looks like wool pants. Oh no, the whole entire midpipe is all squished. It's oval like a uh, like NASCAR exhaust. I don't know if they still do that. I believe it is all stainless in construction. And this is round, so to measure the diameter, pre-resonator, only 44 millimeter in diameter. Jeez. Honda Signity. Because of the nature of this engine, it literally does nothing when you press the accelerator pedal. It, it, the engine isn't meant to drive the car. There's a big pipe of robot spaghetti right here because up above my head, below the rear seat is the IPU, the integrated power unit, which houses the battery. The battery for this hybrid system and the power unit all combined less than a hundred pounds. Also has a little chassis stiffener brace right here by the second resonator. As far as the transmission goes on the Accord Sport Hybrid, it's kind of a mind fuck because it's unlike any vehicle I've ever reviewed with an internal combustion engine. The engine isn't even designed to drive the car. It's just part of an electrical power plant to charge its batteries. And the transmission houses two electric motors that have interplay in between them that acts as kind of like a torque converter for getting this thing up and going. Now, one of those electric motors is for driving the wheels while the other one is for starting the vehicle as well as producing electricity for the batteries along with the gasoline engine. However, there is a clutch pack in there that disengages the engine from those electric motors or engages it under very specific applications like high-speed cruising under medium or full throttle conditions where the gasoline engine will actually provide propulsion to the car. It has a 3.895 final drive ratio and I really wish I could show you it, but uh, there's no accessing it from down here. You have this massive plastic splash tray and then underneath the engine, an aluminum one. Front suspension wise, the Accord utilizes a McPherson strut design with cast aluminum lower control arms, steel knuckle. Also check this out, there's a little like vibration barnacle attached to the strut where the end link bolts up to. And Miss Anti Sway Bar up here, she measures in at just over 27 millimeter. That's also tubular, that's why. Well, those little cooling portals right here in the underbelly plastic, you can see the oil pan of the engine down there. That's actually an impressive front splitter on the front bumper cover. This is all bumper cover. It's all painted gloss black. It is now time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready, go. Wow. 
That was way better than I thought it was going to be. Aggressive tire squeal. Wow. I did not expect that from this. This good stopping distance. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a 312 millimeter or 12.3 inch front rotor with a single piston floating caliper. The wheels on the Sport Hybrid, they are a 19 by eight and a half with a positive 50 millimeter offset. And they're wrapped in a set of 235, 40, 19 inch Goodyear Eagle Touring all season tires. Are you functional? Yep, a little duct channel some airflow. As far as the rear brakes go, it is an 11.1 inch or 282 millimeter rotor with a single piston floating caliper. The wheel and tire, same size as you get up front. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing half electric, half gas beans. That sounds gross. Bolstering check. That's uh, a little sloppy in the bolstering department. These seats are heated as well as if you park in the sun, the black leather will get excruciatingly hot and burn the hell out of the back of your thighs. Ask me how I know. As far as drive modes go, right here in the center, there is a flapper that says drive mode. Yes, it's a flapper. I made that up. I can go from individual, press and hold up. And you can go from your powertrain, steering, ACC, and gauge. To sport to normal, and to econ. I also have a little button below that that I can depress and it will put it into full EV mode, depending on how full your battery charge is currently. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Ready, go. Woo, interesting. Noises. I feel like I'm in a boat. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a boat. It is so smooth. It didn't feel like I was going that fast. Honda people, you're gonna hate me, but this kind of looks like a Ford Taurus cop car from the front. Grab it by the rubber pad. You won't burn your fingertips. Underneath the hood of this 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport is a menagerie of power generation plants. I'm gonna break it down with just the internal combustion engine first though. It is the LFB. H4, basically it's an R20 based Honda, two liter, all aluminum, naturally aspirated, dual overhead cam, four cylinder, that produces 143 horsepower at 6,200 RPM and 129 pound feet of torque at 3,500 RPM. It's not a ton of power out of a two liter four cylinder, especially one that has IV tech. Digging in a little bit deeper on the internal combustion engine, it is 1,993 cc's, has an 81 by 96.7 millimeter bore and stroke, as well as an impressive 13.9 to one compression ratio. Super high, that's like Mazda sky active territory right there. Uh, yep, it comes off easy, good. Now underneath this plastic valve cover, this does employ Honda's IV tech system, which is variable valve timing on the exhaust and intake cams, which is used to simulate an Atkinson cycle by closing the intake valve later on the compression stroke. Next is the traction motors, the larger of the two electric motors that provides propulsion for the vehicle. It produces 181 horsepower, can spin up to speeds of 14,500 RPM. And then paired with that is the smaller motor generator that spins up to 17,000 RPM and produces 161 horsepower. All those systems combined produce a peak 204 horsepower and 247 pound feet of torque from 5,000 to 9,000 RPM. Cause you gotta remember those electric motors spin way faster than the little internal combustion engine. You see the exhaust manifold is cast into the head. So the catalytic converter just bolts right up here to the front, tons of room to access stuff to work on the engine. The air intake ducting goes up across the PCU right here on top of the electric motor. So it looks like it actually provides possible cooling for that system as well. And then it goes back here into the plastic intake manifold in the back half of the engine. There's another coolant expansion chamber right next next to the brake fluid reservoir. I wonder if anyone's ever gonna screw those two up. That would be bad. Underneath this air ducting, you can see there's actually two hard pipes right here for liquid coolant to run through this two motor transmission system that's over on the driver's side. That was definitely neat. Whoa, weird. It 
revs the engine to simulate shifts like a CVT would, but this is not a CVT. They, they do that just because people want to hear that sound, I guess. Handling wise, oh, there goes the engine wanting to make some noises. Gotta produce some more electricities for me. It's a fairly good handling car. It's, it's surprising you forget how good actual cars are now because the focus has been on SUVs and crossovers for the past decade. The cars that did survive have gotten really good. One thing I wanna point out and address, the elephant in the passenger seat, there's no one in the passenger seat. I don't think you could fit an elephant in the car is the fact that this thing has a 614 mile range on a full tank of fuel and e-juices. 614 miles. That is, that's more than any EV that I know of right now. And this thing has a normal size automotive gas tank, actually kind of small for a family sedan. On the back of my steering wheel, I have two flappy paddles for regenerative braking, just like you'd have in a pure EV. So if I put it in the maximum setting, other way, right there, I can let off the throttle and it'll actually bring the vehicle to a stop. It's not true one pedal driving, it's not that aggressive, but it's still pretty neat that it has that so I can make some electricities. Instead of a tachometer, you just get a power meter. It shows nothing to 100%. Actually, you can go past 100%. I don't know how that's possible. Not much I can say about the back seat. It's it's a seat. There's nowhere to charge anything. I do have some cup holders and an armrest. You should at least expect that though. It does look like there is an option for a strip of ambient lighting, but instead you get ambient plastic. Yeah, it's pretty basic and my hair actually scrapes the roof. It's got kind of an old school nostalgia though. This is the way a backseat should be. You just play your Game Boy and I'm old. They did a pretty good job on the interior of the 11th Gen Accord, especially the dash. It has that same kind of look as the Civic with this little center vent. And oh, these are satisfying to click. It has wireless fruit and robot compatibility. Oh, neat. Under vehicle settings, it actually shows the correct color Accord. I wonder if that's coincidental. Change view. Oh, there's so many different settings in here. Holy shit. Body color. That's so crazy. Just like the NSX, you can change the color. That looks really good in blue. This one does have an optional hole in the roof. That was a cavernous hole of a trunk. That's huge. This is bigger than a Crown Vic, I think. For this thing just being in the low 30s, it's got an adequate amount of tech and a feature that I have never seen before. It's traffic jam assist. So it utilizes the lane keep assist and your radar cruise control to mitigate annoying traffic jams where it's constantly speed up, slow down, stop, speed up, slow down, stop. It's pretty cool that they have that. It's sad that they dropped the option for the two liter turbo and the 10 speed auto in the Accord. I think that was a phenomenal option. So there really isn't a good high performance version of the Accord out anymore. Fuel economy, I feel is a little bit understated on this car, what it's rated at and what I've actually been able to do. You can achieve higher than what this thing is rated at. This was just a quick drive to the store. I averaged 70.6 miles per gallon. That is ridiculous. There really isn't much road noise in here and it's pretty windy out right now and I can just feel this thing slipping through the air like butter. I don't think butter actually slips through air very well now that I think about it. I think if you chucked butter, <laughs> you'd make a butterfly. It is now time to give this thing some scores. Starting with the bean score is the assessment of the feeling you get in your gut when the wind blows my hair all over the place and in my mouth. And this 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport is getting a rating of... Next is the cookie score, the assessment of value, what you spend for what you get. And this, as it is equipped in the low 30s, gets a rating of... Followed by the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance and... Accord Hybrid Sport gets a rating of followed by Squid Score, the assessment of handling, and it is getting a rating of. And lastly is Penguin Score, assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle, and this gets a rating of. I actually like this more than I thought I was going to. It's just a clean, simple recipe for a commuter vehicle, and I wish cars would make a comeback. I miss cars. I'm sick of crossovers and SUVs. 
Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.